Happy Friday, everybody. It's Maria Rini from the Welcome Home team. And behind the camera. Hi, everybody. It's Corey. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. And today we are thrilled and delighted to be at Alzheimer's New Jersey here in Oradell, New Jersey, with Lauren Ricca, Development Specialist. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Corey. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. So tell us a little about Alzheimer's New Jersey. What's your mission? What do you do? Thank you so much. Absolutely. So Alzheimer's New Jersey is an independent statewide nonprofit. We are not affiliated with any larger national organization and we don't receive any government funding. So we are a 501c3 and we are supported by grants and donations. Um, our largest program is actually our respite care program where we provide respite grants to families that are dealing with someone with dementia. So it's to a caregiver directly for respite. And of course, all of our programs actually are free to the community and it service all of New Jersey. Wow, so t tell me a little more about the respite program. So you're, t you're talking about a grant to somebody who cares for someone with dementia. Absolutely, yes, yeah, so they are a live-in caregiver and there is no financial eligibility requirements for that, but we do want to see that the person the diagnosed has been proven to have the disease and that the caregiver lives in with them. So they really are, we are serving the person who needs respite the most. Okay, so it's not financial need, it's just we want to give you a break so you can better care for your loved one. Absolutely, and that's a $1,000 grant. It's a one-time hit, but you can apply and we'd love to give that out. <laughs> what other things are you involved with relative to Alzheimer's? Yeah, so we have a helpline where someone can call whether they need to vent or ask questions or just get referrals as to how they can support their loved one and what they need in the community. So it's almost like a navigation process as to how that person that needs the help can really ask about the disease and get the answers. So we can direct you to caregivers in the area, to doctors in the area. Um, allow you to ask questions about what community and government grants and things that you can apply for, what offices are around you that you can go and seek help to care for your loved one. We all, yeah, so that's something. We also have uh, support groups. So we have a wide array of support groups for caregivers. Some are in person that are just starting back up, but of course we did go virtual over the last year phone calls and Zoom meetings, sometimes team meetings, and it's just a nice way for someone to gather. They can talk to other people going through the same thing. Um, and there's different types. We have ones for spouses, children, um, early onset. So if that's someone who's been diagnosed earlier than after the age of 65, um, that someone can come and just meet with the community and other people dealing with the same thing, hash it out, have a cup of coffee, and really discuss that how they can help each other and to give tips very interesting <laughs> must be must be a life save, saver for so many Absolutely. families suffering and and I'm imagining the zoom did you see uh, the number of people availing themselves of these groups grow we actually did that's a great question thank you um, we were able to reach more people that way um, it's hard for caregivers to give up that hour or so, even though it's necessary, um, when they can't get other care for the person they're providing for. So to take two hours to travel, sit for an hour, it might not be easy to get that care that you need for someone, but when you can have them in the room next to you and still log on and have that time to yourself, you know, it was really a, a saver for a lot of people. Um, there are some people that are excited to be back in person. They love to get out and make sure they get that time for themselves. So we know that the mix now is a really good option to have. Before they were all in person. So now that we have a little bit of a variety here, it's really serving the community well. Okay, so the programs that you, that you have are all for the caregiver. Are there any directly involving so we don't directly work necessarily with someone with a disease unless a caregiver is with them. So we did have a grant program this past year that actually was highly attended. That was like a music with dementia program. So the caregiver and the person with dementia were able to do a music program together virtually. 
and that was very well attended. So I know we want to pick back up on things like that, that we're providing comfort, entertainment for those with the disease. And right in the home where it's Absolutely. easily accessible. Yeah. Super. You've got a little card in front of you I that I find <laughs> intriguing. So tell us about that. Awesome. These are our new cards, our Please Be Patient cards. On the back, they do have our helpline number that anyone can call when they need us. And on the front, it says, please be patient. And it says, the person I am with has dementia. And it lists some things that they might do. They might have difficulty speaking. They may repeat questions. They uh, may not remember what you said. So this is just telling someone to please have patience with them and to understand discreetly. We can kind of pass this along. Say if you go to a restaurant with someone, if you go to the hair salon, the dentist, anything, you can pass this along. Just be like, check this out. And the person knows, the provider knows to be a little bit more respectful and mindful of the person with dementia. I love that. And they are? These are free. You can call us. We can give these out to you at any time. We're happy to print these for you. Super. Now, you also have a publication in front of you. Yeah. This is just our general programs and services flyer. Um, so it talks about our main programs here. Of course, the respite is right on that. Family support groups, community education, which is obviously big for us. Um, dementia and Alzheimer's specifically is actually the sixth leading cause of death in the US so we want to educate the community on that and let people know that this is a deadly disease that it does affect the entire family and I think that's very eye-opening especially for someone in a younger generation um, it's something that we think tend to think about because age obviously is the, still the largest the greatest risk factor for contracting the disease it's um, developing, I should say, the disease. It is um, something that affects everyone, grandkids, spouses, children. So everyone needs to be educated on how they can deal with that person, love that person, and give them the care that they need and the, still with dignity and respect that they deserve. Talk about Alzheimer's in New Jersey, Bergen County. What Absolutely. does that look like? So uh, specifically in Bergen County, this past year, we gave out $53,000 in that respite care grant alone, and that's just for Bergen County. So we're very proud of that number. As you can see, we have an office here. We actually have three offices in the state, but we do have a presence here in Bergen County because we feel that that's very important, and that we've had an office here for a long time. Um, in fact, like, New Bergen County is actually considered one of the top five counties in the state with the highest risk because of the fact that there are 18% of the population is 65 and older. So we do need to be mindful of the fact that those are the greatest people with the greatest risk and we want to be here to care for them as best we can. Super. So fundra fundraising is all private. Absolutely. This Big is event walk. coming up. Now, <laughs> I, I'm going to jump in here. I'll be at the walk. So uh, Warren is a valued member of the Oradell Emerson Rotary Club, and we will have a team at the walk. Yay. Tell us about the walk. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, so we'll be having a walk on, in Paramus at Bergen Community College on Sunday, October 24th. So we actually host five walk locations throughout the year, and Paramus is one of our largest, and we're very proud of that. Um, and... Yeah, it's a fun day for the family to come out. It's free to register, free to join us. We encourage fundraising if you can. Um, but it's a, a day where we come together, the community understands the disease, we do a small program, and then we do about a two mile easy walk around the Bergen Community Campus. Um, so it's a really nice day, refreshments, and it's just a great fundraiser. We're really proud of this, and we've been doing the walks for a really long time. So. We hope to see everyone there. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We should have good weather, and you can get some steps in. So yeah. think about it. Come on out and, and walk with us on Sunday. Anything else you want uh, the audience to know, Lauren? We'll put your contact information uh, on social media, Thank on you. YouTube there. Anything else you want them to know in closing? Yes, absolutely. I just want to remind everyone that our programs are free for the community. So everything that you need from us is provided with free of charge for anything. And despite the fact that we were talking about donations and that is how we survive and we are truly grateful, I always like to let people know that nonprofits are here to serve the community. Though we need your support, we are here for you. 
So anytime you need to call us, email us, or if you need our services, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Super. Thanks so much. Thank you. Lauren Ricca, Alzheimer's, New Jersey. Thank you.